I have not preached on Friday afternoons and Sunday evenings and I miss preaching. But I enjoy listening to our men preaching also. I wonder how many men have preached already. There is not a single message that did not bless my heart. All the messages that they preach, it's really great. If you miss them, you really miss a message. And uh, today, uh, Brother Jimmy is uh, tasked to bring the Word of God. Our theme for the last almost two months now is about the love of God. And I told him, Brad, if you want to preach uh, another message apart from love, that's fine. But uh, uh, he decided to bring to us a message on love. And I hope you have the notes. Okay, if you don't have one, we have plenty, we have plenty of copies. You just raise your hand. Brother Patrick will come and give you one. Uh, Brother Jimmy is a man I dearly love. Okay, like many uh, members here at BBC. He was a special help to me. Especially when I first arrived Qatar. I arrived here January 25. He was not here. The first Friday I was here was January 28. He was not there. But he was, uh, I met him the first time during the second Friday I was in Qatar. And like many other members in our church, he really helped me get adjusted when I first uh, arrived here. He took some time. He took some time to uh, take me out and he really helped me a lot and that is something I really owe this man and uh, today he will he will bring to us the word of God and I hope you will listen not only with your ears listen with your heart amen, amen. because we are going to listen to a very important subject today the Bible tells us in the book of 1st Corinthians and now by that faith hope and what charity that means what love the greatest of this is what and he will be discussing to us about love in John chapter in First Corinthians chapter 13. Listen with your heart, and I'm sure that the Lord will uh, bless your heart today. Brother Jimmy, you come and give us the word. Palakpakan natin yung ating tagapagsalita. Thank you, Pastor John. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, before we start, I'd like to request everybody to stand up and open our Bibles. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1 to 30. We'll read, we'll read all the verses of the chapter. And we will uh, read it uh, all together. That is 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1 to 13. Are you there? Amen. Let's start, verse 1. Though I so speak with the tongues of, of men and, and of angels, and I'm not a charity, I have become a sounding glass or a tingling symbol. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have no charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, and have not charity, it profited me nothing. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity wanteth not itself. It is not puffed up. Doth not behave itself unseemly. Seeketh not her own. Is not easily provoked. Thinketh no evil. Rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Beareth all things. Believeth all things. Hopeth all things. Endureth all things. Charity never faileth. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I am as a child. I doubt as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face, now I know in part, but then shall I know, even as I also am known. And now I find in faith, hope, love, and charity. This is me, but the greatest of this is charity. Let us pray. O oh, Father in heaven, we thank you, O oh Lord, for this opportunity that we are able to listen to your word again, O oh Lord. Our prayers that the Holy Spirit guide us. Touch our hearts and our minds so that we'll be able to learn something today, O oh Lord. O oh Lord, teach us your word. 
May your name be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Again, thank you very much. It is actually an honor and privilege to be uh, uh, bringing the Word of God today. Uh, I've said this uh, last Sunday when I brought the message. Uh, it gives me a certain feeling of uh, uneasiness because you know I'm not really used to talking to a lot of people or in front of a lot of people. But you know God is sustaining uh, my strength and also my my uh, wisdom so that I'll be able to share the word of God with you. Um, as Pastor John mentioned, you know our topic for day, today is really very important and it is also uh, very practical. Why? Because we should always ask ourselves what really matters most. That is the title of our message today. Actually, God has been good to His people. Amen. God has been good to His people all the time. We mentioned that earlier. God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. He has given us more than what we deserve. He provided a means for us to be saved. He sent His only begotten Son for us to be saved. And this is unmerited. This is something that we don't deserve, and yet God gave it to us. He has given us many precious promises. I think there are around 2,000 promises in the Bible that we can hold on to. And He stand by His word. We are assured that, we, that whatever God has promised, He will fulfill. Because uh, God is not a liar. When we come to the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation, the Holy Spirit gives us spiritual gifts. Amen. Not everyone in this room who is saved does not have a spiritual gift. One way or the other, we have a spiritual gift. We can see that in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7. All the spiritual gifts have a place in God's ministry. It has a special place in God's ministry. <clears throat> These gifts that the Holy Spirit is giving us should be used to edify the saints Amen. and glorify the Savior. Amen. Excuse me. And one of the greatest gifts that God has given us, which I think is very essential to every believer, is the gift that contains the uh, divine power. And this is the love of God working in us and through us. Amen. This is, I think, is this I think is the greatest gift that God has given us. Amen. In Romans chapter five, verse five, it says, "And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. His love was placed within us. It is placed in our hearts." Amen. And he has done this through his grace. In John chapter 13, verse 35, it says, By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have loved one another. We are able to love one another because of the love of God, Amen. which is in us. Amen. In John chapter 13, verse 34, it says, A new commandment I gave unto you, that ye love one another, as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. In 1 John chapter 3, verse 14, it says, We know that we have passed from death unto life, because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. We can see in all these verses the love of God in us. The love, the love of God that is manifested through us and in us. We are able to love somebody or another because of the love of God which is in us. However, if we study the book of Corinthians, this is a letter of Apostle Paul to the uh, Church of Corinth, we can see that, you know, the Corinthian believers possess almost all of the gifts that the, the Holy Spirit has given them. Be it prophecy, be it, uh, uh, excuse me, be it uh, tongues, be it uh, giving, whatever gift that the, Lord, the Holy Spirit has given to all believers, they possess it. However, they miss something. That's why Apostle Paul has to write the letter to them. And what is this? They lack love for one another. Amen. God 
expect this from every one of us. Amen. As, as the passages that we have read earlier, even if you have all those gifts, even if you possess all the, the riches in the world, even if you have, if you are as, as uh, uh, intelligent as Solomon, King Solomon, all of this will not be, uh, all of this will be in vain. It has no worth if you don't have love in your heart. Amen. <clears throat> That's why the most important question in our lives today is this. What really matters most? What really matters most? What matters most is not whether we possess flashy gifts or not. What matters most is not how smart we are. What matters most is not how wealthy, not how popular, not how famous, and not how well we, how well liked we are. But the most important question in our life should be, how well do we love? Amen. How well do we love? That's why Apostle Paul gave this letter, specifically this chapter to the Corinthian people. This, this is not only addressed to the Corinthian people, but it is addressed to every believer. Amen. Every believer. In our text, Apostle Paul gives an in-depth description of love. Meaning, if you look uh, into all these verses, it's very in-depth. It is a description of what love is. It is a description of the love that uh, the Lord has given us. It is the love that uh, uh, the Lord has shown us. And it is the love that uh, the Lord has uh, uh, asked us or has given us to, to enjoy. <clears throat> These are the truths that we should be reminded continually. Amen. Every day of our lives, we have to be reminded of these truths because all of these truths we can apply in our everyday lives and also in our relationships. Be it a relationship with our parents, our spouse, our children, our office mates, and everyone that we meet every day. These truths can very well help us to be uh, the loving person that the Lord wants us to be. Amen. Let us look at the, the verses one by one. This, is very, this will be very quick. Number one, we can see the features of love mentioned in verse 4 to 6. Paul shows us many signs of true godly love. Number one, it suffered long. It suffered long. Charity suffered long. Love suffered long. The word means patient endurance under provocation. This characteristic of love reveals the truth that love does not retaliate. Amen. It can endure evil. It can endure injury. It can endure provocation without being filled with resentment and revenge. You know, without the grace of God, this is very difficult. Amen. Because if you are maligned by somebody, the tendency is for you to retaliate. Amen. However, the Lord is teaching us that love suffered long. Amen. Love suffered long. Amen. It makes the mind firm. It makes the mind firm. It gives power over anger. It furnishes it with a persevering patience. It waits and wish for reformation of a brother than being filled with resentment because of his conduct. Amen. Love suffered long. And number two, love is kind. The word refers to an active goodness that goes forth in behalf of others. Genuine love, uh, genuine love is never hateful or mean, but it respects others and reaches out to them. Actually, the law of kindness is about the lips. It is about the heart which is large. It is about the hands that are open, ready to show favors and to do good and to seek to be useful any time of the day. I repeat that. The law of kindness is the lips, the heart that is large, the hands that are open, Amen. so that we'll be able to show favors to others any time of the day. 
irregardless of the situation. Number one, love suffered long. Number two, love is kind. Number three, love and Vietnam. True love is not jealous. Not jealous over abilities, over successes, over possessions of others. Instead of being jealous when others prosper or excel, love is pleased when they do well. Jealousy is a very, very um, vile sin. Jealousy was the one who brought Joseph you know, to prison. Why did he go to Egypt? Because the brothers envied him. Because he is the apple of the eye of the father. And because God is manifesting in his life. Amen. Jealousy also brought Daniel to the lion's den. A lot of people, you know, the leaders at that time, other leaders are very jealous of him because he is also the apple of the Pharaoh's eye. Jealousy is very, very, is a very violent sin. <clears throat> if we love our neighbor, our neighbor, we shall be far from envying him or being displeased with him. Amen. Because if we see others getting a lot of blessings, the tendency is that we get jealous and empty. Yeah. We feel bad about ourselves and say to ourselves, how come this person is being blessed and I am not? But love, but God is teaching us that love and Vietnam. Amen. If we love our neighbor, we shall be far from envying his welfare or being displeased with him, that we shall share it and rejoice at it. Romans 12.15 say, says, Rejoice to them that do rejoice. Rejoice with them that do rejoice. We should be happy if other people are happy. Amen. Number four. Love wanted not itself is not puffed up. This means love does not make a parade. Love is not arrogant or proud. Amen. Love does not brag. It does not draw attention to itself or to what is it, it is doing. Love does not have the center of attention. No matter how great our talents or how spectacular our gifts, everything is only because of the grace of God. Even if you have accomplished a lot in life, this is not because of yourself, but only because of the grace of God. And you don't have the right to be proud about it. Romans 12 10 says be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love in honor preferring one another because true love will give us an, an esteem over uh, an esteem on our brothers rather than ourselves Amen. our esteem for brothers should limit our esteem for ourselves Amen. so that it will prevent us from being conceited and arrogant. Amen. Why? This is only because of the love of God. And the love of God says that love wanted not and is not passed out. Amen. Number five, love does not behave itself unseemly. Love is never rude, but it always treats others with compassion, consideration, respect. Love controls the emotions. Love controls the emotions. It is not friendly one day and then tomorrow you're rude to, somebody, to, to that person. You love him today because he's doing good favors for you. Tomorrow you don't love him anymore because he's not doing favors for you anymore. However, the love of God is a love that does not, does not behave itself unseemly. Number six, love see it not her own. True love is never selfish or self-centered. It is actively interested in what will profit others. It never looks at itself first, but, is always, but, is, but it always considers 
another head ahead of it, ahead of the damage of others. Amen. Philippians chapter 2, verse 3 to 5, it says, Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in, low, in lowliness of mind let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Amen. Love seeketh not her own. And number seven, it is not easily provoked. We can see that in verse number five. True love keeps no record of evil's boundary. True love does not keep records of evil done to it. We have, if we have a fight with somebody or with our wife, and then we forgive our wife or our husband because of that mistake. And then after a year, your husband will do it again or your wife will do it again. And then you can still remember and tell your wife, you've done it last year, and you're doing it again. The resentment is still in your heart. But the Lord is teaching us that if we love, we should forget the hurt. We should forget the hurt. Amen. <clears throat> this characteristic of love reminds us that love does not demand its own rights. It is willing to yield to the will of another. Love corrects a sharpness of temper. It softens the mind so that it does not suddenly conceive a, 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 uh, sorry, a vehement passion where the fire of love is kept then the flames of wrath will be easily will sorry will not easily kindle. I repeat that again. If the fire of love is kept, then the flames of wrath will not easily kindle. If we just hold on to that love, if we keep that love in our hearts, then we will we are not easily provoked. We will not get angry very easily. Why? Because of that love of God. It says love is not easily provoked because anger cannot prevail over love. Yeah. Anger cannot prevail over love. Yeah. Number eight, love thinketh no evil. Love takes no worthless inventory. Genuine love does not attribute evil motives to people. It's very hard to trust because that's the human nature. However, if you have the love of God, it gives you the grace to trust people. Amen. It gives you the grace to trust people. The action of others are not seen in the most negative light. Love always thinks the best of the others, of the other. Genuine love does not dwell what others may have done, but love cherishes no malice nor gives way to revenge. It is never mischievous, nor inclined to revenge. It does not suspect evil of others. Because real, real love does not remember injury. It does not believe all it hears about another. And also does not look for fault in others. Amen. Love thinketh no evil. Number nine, rejoiceth not in iniquity. Love rejoiceth not in iniquity. Love does not rejoice in sin, whether be it your sin or the sin of others. Amen. Love does not rejoice in sin. Because it's human nature. If somebody sins and falls, we always talk about it. Yeah. And we even talk to other people about it. This is human nature. However, the Bible is teaching us that love does not rejoice when another person falls into sin. Amen. 
We don't rejoice over the sin of another. That is why if somebody has sinned, we don't talk about it to others. Amen. We don't talk about it to others. <clears throat> True love does not gossip. Amen. True love does not gossip. Amen. Or rejoice when another believer falls. But it should hurt you when somebody is hurt. Amen. It should hurt you when somebody is hurt. Amen. Because why? Because love rejoiceth not in iniquity. Amen. According to verse 5 of our text. And number 10, love rejoiceth in truth. While love hates all forms of evil, it loves the truth. It rejoices when truth is proclaimed. Amen. That's why if you hear the truth in the pulpit, don't take it against the speaker because it is meant to change you. Amen. Because that's the message of God to you. Amen. Amen. Because love Rejoice in truth. Amen. No matter how it hurts. No matter how it hurts. Because that's the kind of love that the Lord wants us to have. Rejoicing in truth. We can see that, you know, the first part of the message was the features of love. And the second part is the fortitude of love. <coughs> These verses tell us of love's staying power. Love is a remarkable thing that never wavers or fails. Number one, it bears all things. Love patiently endures and overlooks the faults in others. The word bear literally means to cover. Instead of parading the failures and faults of others, love covers them. Sorry, love covers them and continues to love in spite of those things. Amen. Because love beareth all things. And number two, love believeth all things. Love always places the best possible interpretation on everything that happens. It does not always seek the most negative answer, but it believes that good will triumph in any situation. We should always be reminded of Romans chapter 8, verse 28 when it says that all things work yet together for good to those who love God and the whole according to His purpose. Everything works together for good. Number three, hope at all things. Love always expects the best possible outcome. Amen. Love refuses to accept failure. Love is the eternal optimist because love always holds our hope that things will work out in the end. Because we know that God is omniscient and He knows what is best for us. Amen. Number three, uh, sorry, number four, love endureth all things. Actually, in the military, it means that love does not give up the fort. You know, if you have a camp, you don't just give up on the fort if there's, there's a threat to the fort. But what you will do is that you stand up on its ground Amen. and continue, continue to defend the fort Amen. in spite of or despite the challenges that you are facing. Amen. You will do all everything. You will do everything that it costs you just not to be thrown out of the camp. And that is what the Lord is teaching us about love. Love endureth things. Because it is normal for Christians to experience hardships. It is normal for us to encounter problems in life. Amen. It is normal for us to, to uh, experience affliction. That's why we have a series about uh, uh, sufferings and afflictions for about a month now. Sufferings. Almost two months or two months. Why? Because, because God is teaching us that we should be able to endure things. You know, I remember what Pastor John uh, said about Apostle Paul. You know, the Lord did not remove his uh, uh, thorn in the flesh. However, God gave him the grace 
to withstand that thorn in the press, flesh. This is what the Lord wants us to do, to endure all things. And we can only endure all things through His grace. Amen. And number five, charity never faileth. When everything else in this world has passed away, when everything that is held, held us such in high, high esteem is already gone, when knowledge and spiritual gifts are already not useful or not needed anymore, love will still exist. Amen. Love will still exist. Because it is the only great constant until eternity. <clears throat> Our text says in verse number 13, that is 1 Corinthians 13, 13, it says, And now abide that faith, hope, charity, there's three, but the greatest of this is charity or love. The Bible says that, says that three things abide. This is faith, hope, and love. Yet faith and hope are encompassed by love. It is encompassed by love. Therefore, the greatest of all things a believer can possess is love. Amen. Why is that? Why is that? Because if our love is right, if our love is right, then faith is not a problem. If our love is right, then our faith is not a problem. And if our love is right, then our hope is always in the right place. I repeat that again. If our love is right, then our faith is not a problem. If our love is right, then our hope is in the right place. And when our love is right, then we are sure that we are right. <clears throat> For just a moment, at this moment, let us take all things that we value. What are the things that you value in life? Take those away. Be it your talent, your abilities, your intelligence, your gifts, your potential, your achievements, or anything else. Let us put that aside. Just for this moment. Let us not think about, about all those things. And then, ask ourselves, how well do we love? How well do I love? Let us ask ourselves, do we possess the characteristics that we have just discussed? Do we exercise these characteristics to strengthen our relationship with others? Do we love God more than anything else? As said in Matthew chapter 22, verse 37, 38. And do we love others like God has loved us? These are the most important questions that I want you to answer today. Set, setting aside everything that you uh, cherish. Your possessions, your abilities, your achievements, set that aside and ask yourself, how well do I love? I will end the message by reading the answer of the question that uh, Pastor Jan has posted in Facebook yesterday. The question goes like this, what is love? What is love? The post said, love is silence when your words would hurt. Love is silence when your words would hurt. Love is patience when your neighbor is rude and ungracious. Love is patience when your neighbor is rude and ungracious. Love is deafness or doesn't hear anything when a scandal flows. Love is thoughtfulness 
for other souls. Love is promptness when stern duty calls. And love is courage when misfortune fails. This is what love is. This is what love is. And we are only able to express and exercise this love if we have the love of God in our hearts only by His grace. Only by His grace. And if you are here today and you have not accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, I urge you to accept Him as your personal Savior, savior so that you'll be able to experience this love that we have just discussed. Thank you very much, Pastor John. Can we bow our heads, please, for a word of prayer? Never ahead now, let